Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Spotify, ticker symbol SPOT. So we're going to run through the basics of Spotify's business, and then we're going to see if we can come up with a fair value for Spotify stock. Now, this video is another collaboration video, and to run through our Spotify biz the Spotify business part of this video, I'm happy to introduce you to another YouTuber. His name is Tyler McMurray. He's going to run through Spotify's business, and then I'll be back right after that to talk about the different ways we could try to value Spotify stock. Okay, now with that being said, let's jump right into this thing. Here comes Tyler, and then I'll be right back. Unlike video streaming, which seems to have new competitors entering the space all the time, Audio streaming isn't a very crowded market. Of the prominent streaming services, Spotify already has the largest market share, with most estimates putting it around 33%. That's well above its nearest competitor, Apple Music, which comes in with around a 20% market share. So when considering an investment into the audio streaming sector, which is anticipated to grow at about an 18% compound annual growth rate, Spotify seems like a compelling choice. However, Spotify's continued growth will depend entirely on increasing its monthly active users, or MAUs, and being able to profit from them. I want to take a look at how Spotify plans to do this to figure out whether they can capitalize on the growing demand for audio streaming. As they say, content is king, so we'll start with Spotify's strategy for improving the content they offer. Then, we'll take a look at Spotify's unique two-sided marketplace for artists and creators, which gives them a more robust path to profitability. We also have to talk about Spotify's aggressive global expansion and their fascinating venture into hardware, both of which should expand their growth opportunities. And finally, we'll throw it back to Jimmy for some financial analysis. So let's get started. For starters, it's important to understand that audio content means much more than music these days. Although music streaming is what primarily created the audio streaming industry, there's many other types of audio content that consumers are looking for. Recently, Spotify has been expanding into audiobooks, podcasts, and live audio streaming, all while continuing to strengthen their music library. Admittedly, audiobooks are a fairly small portion of the audio streaming market making up less than $3 billion in 2019. But its growth is expected to be quite high at around a 24% compound annual growth rate for the next several years. Spotify has recently started testing audiobooks on their platform, although it's a pretty small test in comparison to what they're doing in other areas. Still, considering this is an untapped market for the leading audio streaming platform, it could be a noteworthy growth opportunity if these tests prove successful. The biggest investment Spotify is making lately is into podcasts, with over $900 million to date. This started with Spotify becoming the exclusive home of the Joe Rogan podcast last year, in a deal that was valued over $100 million. They've also signed deals for other exclusive podcasts with names that include Kim Kardashian, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle. These exclusive podcasts alone are enough to get new users onto the Spotify platform, many of which could convert to paid monthly subscribers. Their investments also include the Megaphone platform, which is specifically for podcast publishing and advertising. In addition to offering podcast creators an intuitive platform for creating content, it provides advertisers with powerful tools and data to reach their target audience. With this acquisition, Spotify is maximizing their potential to profit off of the podcasts they offer. It gives podcasters who use the Megaphone platform easy access to the Spotify user base, while also giving advertisers a more valuable presence on Spotify. This will also complement their streaming ads insertion technology, which is another tool to boost results for advertisers. The big spending and shift to podcast content may be a bit surprising, but it makes sense when you think about how profitable this type of content can be. With podcasts, they won't owe any royalties to music labels. Plus, you can't roll an advertisement in the middle of a song, but it's almost expected from podcasts. The presence of advertisements in podcasts is most comparable to radio advertising, which is nearly a $20 billion market. It's expected to stay more or less flat over the next several years, although it's likely that we'll see some of this move into podcast advertising. With their acquisition of Megaphone and original podcasts, Spotify will have complete control on how they monetize their podcast library. And thanks to the ability to advertise within this content, they don't necessarily need listeners to pay for it with a monthly subscription. So while they'll probably get some new paid users from their podcast efforts, it could still be a hugely profitable expansion without them. The metrics Spotify has seen around podcast content validate the company's efforts to expand further. Last year, they saw podcast consumption double from 2019, as did the podcast advertising revenue. They also believe that podcasts will increase their users' lifetime value and retention. Clearly, podcasts are a rapidly growing product for Spotify, and they're even expected to surpass their biggest rival, Apple, and monthly listeners in 2021. So this is perhaps the most important area to watch for growth at Spotify. Recently, Spotify made another acquisition of the company behind Locker Room, an app that is probably best compared to Clubhouse. Like Clubhouse, users can join a room and have an open discussion, 
While Locker Room was created for sports, Spotify plans to expand the product to include music, cultural programming, and other active features. Clubhouse was recently rumored to be valued around $4 billion, which shows the potential for these live audio experiences. Although it's still unclear exactly how Spotify will integrate this into the platform, it shows that they're aggressively building a very diverse audio streaming ecosystem. Just like the other areas we discussed, it'll serve as a new product to attract new users to the platform and potentially convert them into paid subscribers. Although it seems like Spotify might be overlooking their music library, they're still creating some powerful opportunities with their two-sided marketplace. Traditionally, music labels are responsible for distributing music and getting it in front of new listeners. They may turn to things like radio to get this music heard. But as streaming services grow and radio becomes less important, music labels are becoming weaker. And this leaves a huge opportunity open for Spotify. The two-sided marketplace enables artists, labels, and other groups to purchase placements on the Spotify app. These will appear as non-intrusive recommendations to check out new albums or artists, but it could expand beyond these pop-ups. Spotify also creates curated playlists, mixes, radios, and other discovery tools that could be great real estate for these sponsored placements. With the ecosystem they've created and the continued displacement of record labels, this could become a massive revenue source in the future. In addition to enhancing their content and platform, Spotify is expanding globally. This year, they're undertaking their broadest market expansion to date, bringing their service to over 80 new markets and adding 36 new languages to the platform. This increases their addressable market by a billion people. If they can maintain a 33% market share in these new markets, adding about 330 million people to the platform, they'll nearly double their active users from Q4's 345 million. Finally, Spotify is experimenting with a piece of hardware that is mysteriously being called the car thing. This device consists of little more than a screen and is designed to be mounted in your vehicle. Very little is known about this device so far, and Spotify has even reiterated that they're not interested in expanding to hardware, but that this device is purely a means to learn how people consume audio in their cars. In fact, they don't have plans to make it available commercially, and even suggested other tests might follow it. In September 2020, they published quite a bit of data on audio consumption in the car, although it's unclear whether this was collected from these car-themed devices. Apparently, audio streaming in cars has increased 40% since April of 2020, largely driven by podcasts. I think this shows that Spotify is making a comprehensive effort to cater their content to what people are listening to and where they're listening to it. Of course, this also further validates the investment Spotify is making in the podcasting. Overall, Spotify is gearing up to fuel some pretty serious growth with new types of content, and particularly podcasts. They already have a massive market share, and considering all of these developments, Spotify seems very well positioned to grow alongside the global audio streaming market. But we also have to consider what the numbers say. And with that, I want to give a big thank you to Jimmy for having me, and I'll throw it back to him for the financial analysis. Thank you, Tyler. Okay, now let's see if we can come up with a fair value for Spotify stock. So, as many of you may know, discount of free cash flow is my favorite way to value a stock. And this is the discount of free cash flow calculation I came up with for Spotify stock. And given that Spotify is currently trading in the $265 range, well, clearly it looks either way overvalued based on our $100 fair value calculation here, or discount of free cash flow doesn't really work in this situation. And I can tell you that in this case, discount of free cash flow is not the best method to use. And that's because Spotify is still a fairly young company and their free cash flow is simply not reliable enough or not large enough at this point to use it to project the fair value of the company. Now, it is impressive that they do, that they do have positive free cash flow, so that's a good sign, but we really have to find a different method. So one method that could work better for these types of companies, a company like Spotify, a young, fast-growing company, one the method that could work better is something like enterprise value to revenue. And just so we're on the same page, to calculate enterprise value, well, first we take the market cap of the company. This is the part of the formula that varies based on how the stock price is moving. Because as the stock price moves, the market cap also moves. So we take the market cap, and then we add back preferred stock, we add back total debt, add back minority interest, and then we take away cash and cash equivalents. Now, many times companies won't have preferred shares or minority interest. So if we take away these two pieces of the formula, well, we end up with a much simpler formula for enterprise value. This holds true for Spotify. Spotify doesn't have either two of those numbers at this point. So now all we do is we take the enterprise value and we divide that by the company's revenue over the past 12 months. And when we pull up Spotify's historical enterprise value to revenue chart, well, we can see that over this entire time period, the average was about four and a half X, which means that on average, the enterprise value for Spotify stock 
has been 4.5 times that of revenue. So when we consider its own history, in theory, we want to buy, we want the current multiple to be below that level. So if we wanted to buy a Spotify stock closer to its historical average for enterprise value to revenue, well, that would mean that we would buy the stock right around $195 per share. So when we switch over to a stock chart for Spotify, well, that would mean that we need Spotify stock to pull back before it would become a reasonable buy based on its own historical numbers. Now for me, I like Spotify's business and personally, I'll be adding Spotify to my bucket list of companies, which is basically a list of companies that I have that I want to own, but I want it to own below my calculation of fair value. In this case, $195 per share. Now Spotify will be one of the very few growth stocks. I've really focused more on dividend stocks and value stocks, but I'm trying to go out of my way to add some more growth opportunities. So I'm gonna add this to my growth list. And at some point I'll make a video if you're interested on the companies on my bucket list. Now, if we like dividend investing, well, Tyler actually did an interesting video where he goes through some of his favorite dividend ETFs. So if you're curious, perhaps that's a good next video for you to watch. I got a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.